What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Same Difference Podcast. <laughs> Is this thing on? Hello. <laughs> Hello, happy Monday, Joy. Happy Monday, friends. <laughs> what was you grabbing What's on? What's going on, girl? I'm just munching on these little, I don't even like these things, but I bought them, so. Groceries too hot away, so we gonna eat them today, mom. What they, they look like Jesus. They crackers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I gotta chew them off camera because I don't want to be in the mic chewing, but yeah. It, <laughs> you don't want to give us no ASMR? A little commercial, but I ain't even girl. Did anybody sponsoring me? Got no damn brand deal. Not telling you what the hell these is. I tell y'all can <laughs> But uh, I had a taste for wine and cheese, and I went to go get my prosecco and some another cracker that I like, and I forgot the cracker, and this is all I got. So here we are. <laughs> and I forgot the cracker. <laughs> Them crackers. <laughs> these only the crackers I fuck with is these. The rest of them. Let me stop. So how was your weekend? <sighs> Sorry, I was recording the list. My weekend was quiet per usual. Okay. Um, my weekend was quiet per usual. Um, I did, which I feel like so accomplished because I did something that you haven't done yet. <laughs> and what's that? I went and saw the Tiana Taylor movie. Did you? You and saw I, a movie? No way. And you haven't. <laughs> Girl, no, no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's going to be the only movie you see this year. What you mean? <laughs> Sees one movie and is like living life. Girl. <laughs> well, so how was it? <laughs> Honestly, Pasha, honestly. Uh oh. Oh no. Sorry, I um sorry, y'all. I needed to respond to a text message, my bad. Mm. Anyway, um honestly the movie you know, the movie was great in the beginning. I really enjoyed, like, you know, everything leading up to what I thought was going to be this height. No, I thought the movie would. Mm-hmm. And then it would be like, ah. Uh, and it kind of built up and then it kind of fell flat. I don't, but this is just me. I don't like movies that um, don't have an ending. Oh, I need, I need an cliffhangers. Ending. It wasn't even a cliffhanger to me. It's just a bad ending. The movie just ended. And 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 y'all know, based on the last um podcast episode, I was excited about seeing this. I think Tiana Taylor is just it mm-hmm. when it comes to everything that she does. It is. But I, I was a little bit disappointed in how the movie started. So like it was almost like it had all this momentum and then like at a certain point I feel like mm-hmm. the, the momentum got lost somewhere. Really? And I didn't like the way that it ended. It just kind of was like, okay, so what? And even when I was in the theater, like, I could hear other people saying, okay, so what was, and how did it, and why did it, and what and it is, you know how some movies can end with, like, oh, yeah, it's going to have to be a part two. It wasn't even like that. It was just, a, it just wasn't a good ending to me. Mm. But. Mm. Well, good for you for going to a movie. You went mm-hmm. by yourself with a friend. Um. If I hit the mute button on this, it's because I want to chomp on my little thing here. <laughs> I went to the movies and that's just what I, that's, I went to the movies and that's just that. Okay. okay. I went to the movies. My job business. Y'all don't need to know everything. Okay. Shit. Are you, are you going to tell us on uh, close friends if you went with someone or? Sure. <laughs> Okay, nice. So you went to see a thousand and one. Did you do anything else this weekend? What else did I do this weekend? I didn't do anything else this weekend. I was gonna go to um when you were here, I was telling you about the um mashup mm-hmm. the music mashup thing that mm-hmm. that was happening yesterday. But it also happens in another two weeks, and I was trying to decide if I wanted to go yesterday, and I was just like, bro, no. I'm in the house. Mm. Yeah. You know, the weather in Atlanta sucks. Really? It's really sucked all year long, and I'm sick of it. 
I'm so okay. sorry. Me too. Sick of it. <laughs> okay. It's right um, here. So no, I stayed in the house, washed some clothes, folded some clothes, and you know, was the domestic wife that I am. Somebody's own was... wife, okay. <laughs> Waiting on my husband. I love it. And it. also, you know what? Well, why we on that? Why we on that topic? Because I want to ask you about your weekend friend. And I was going to save this for a little later in the show, but you know, the timing is just perfect right now. There were a lot of maddies and saddies <clears throat> about uh, responding and commenting to, which I've deleted the comments on my post because y'all won't be under somebody wife post with all that negativity. Um, so I deleted the negative comments, but there were a lot of people who felt some type of way about me calling myself and referring to myself as somebody's son wife. But let me tell you what it really did. It set the tone and it raised the bar mm -hmm. because the men who thought that they were going to be in my DM on bullshit, they don't have no reason to be there no more. Mm -mm. Okay. There's a standard that's been set and you don't need it. So move, get out. This isn't your area. This isn't for you. Um, Likewise, there were some men who feel like they may meet the mark and they want a wife and they, they move as a husband and they have inserted themselves inside my DM and I'm not mad. You know, I'm not going to say everybody is my speed and my type, but I'm not mad. I'm glad that I set the tone in the bar that I did because okay. um, process of elimination has begun. Nice. Okay. I think dog is always going to holler. So they weeded their asses out. I wish y'all knew I almost feel like, you know, me and my closest friends, it's almost like we share a brain sometimes because when I literally, when I tell you I literally said those exact words to somebody last week about the clip, a hit dog will holler. Mm -hmm. And baby, they've been barking loud, okay? <laughs> Damn, that sucks. I mean, <sighs> look, if you ain't got the juice, you ain't got it. Like some shit just, some shit is just not for everyone to, to understand. And if you don't understand that I am somebody's son's wife, then go misunderstand elsewhere because you can't do it over here. You're not like- I, I, also, I also like that the women have been reposting and commenting and saying that there's somebody wife. Even a conversation that you and I had about something that had happened and you were like, Joy, I am somebody's son's wife. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I that's the fuck right. Do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. So tell me about your weekend, friend. I know you were supposed to be out of town. I was. I went to Washington, D.C. for the weekend to visit my dad. He's out there on a work project and he's there until May, I want to say. But he was just like, you know, my, you know, my family, you know, my kids and my spouse, you know, I can fly you guys out to visit me while I'm here. So you got to get out here. So me and I packed up Luigi and we went on to D.C. and kicked it for a few days and you know, it was Chicago weather is just, you know, we in the trenches until fucking June. So uh, it was nice to get out and actually enjoy a nice, sunny and somewhat hot day. Um, I got to see my college best friend and meet her babies for the first time. She's got the She's got sweetest, this. sweetest kids. I definitely had baby fever when I was hanging out with her. Um and yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like every trip that I've been on has been like, go, 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 go. And this was a trip where I was actually able to relax a little bit and really like sleep in and just kind okay. of just mosey around and just do whatever. Like um, we did have a museum day. We went to the African-American History Museum. That place. Oh, my God. Amazing. So well done. I love the artifacts. You know, okay. they they cover, you know, they start from slavery to now and beyond. Like the the latest exhibition is about Afrofuturism and how a lot of musicians and actors and, um, you know, creatives have more or less created like an environment in the future where Black people could just be and they could just live and they can, you know, exist in this world free of racism and, mm. you know, discrimination and shit like that. And I never thought about the alternate universes that like um you know George Clinton and you know uh shit who else Missy Elliott Janelle Monet Outcast how they always were they presented themselves as like these otherworldly black figures where they could just kind of be whoever they wanted to be in this alternate universe and so that was like the 
um, the newest exhibition that they had. So we started with that and then we went backwards. But just the, um, you know, what they chose to highlight in African-American history and how it just resonates with me and just all of us. And I mean, they even had like a little, some artifacts on hair care, girl. Like they had Mm -hmm. a pressing comb and a hot comb. They had the Marcel irons and the stove and like, Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that is a part of our culture. Um, you know, they had a, um, the exhibit, you know, surrounding music and just black music in general and all of the, uh, you know, movie studios and artists that donated, you know, and loaned their, you know, costumes and, you know, artifacts and shit to the museum. Like LeBron James, the LeBron James Family Foundation, like sponsors, Hmm. exhibits at the museum it's just it's in, they sponsored like the sports exhibit they have like some artifacts like there's some muhammad ali there's a whole section on just muhammad ali and who he was as a boxer and then who he was as an activist and you know it was literally on loan from his family foundation so it's just it was just eye-opening um and just really cool like i remember when it first opened you couldn't get a ticket there Mm-hmm. So it was nice to be able to actually get in and go. And I mean, just the way the building is constructed. I mean, it's literally the building is designed to look like a headdress. And it's just like who, who, I mean, just, just the, the attention to detail was just. Pasha amazing. plugging y'all in. If y'all in DC now, y'all know where to so go. The African, to I mean, if you black and in DC, you ain't been there. What are you doing? Um, get your ass up in there. Um, And then we also went to the National Portrait Gallery. So we got to see like all of the paintings of like every single president ever. And then of course you got, you know, Barack Obama's beautiful portrait done by Kehinde Wiley. Like, I mean, just, just a beautiful piece of art. And I remember when I lived in Cleveland, you know, I used to love going to the Cleveland Museum of Art. I used to live up in that motherfucker. Like I would go to their little happy hours on the first of the month. I will go to the, they had a Basquiat exhibit. You went to the Basquiat exhibit with me once. I went to that thing twice. Um, but they, they had a speaker, a speaker series. And the artist who painted Barack Obama for his official portrait, mm-hmm. uh, you know, gave, you know, gave a talk on, you know, his artwork and his process. And he even discussed um his process with painting Barack Obama. So it was really nice to see that at the National Portrait Gallery in person and just kind of reflecting back to when, you know, he spoke and I just live for, I live for a fucking art museum. That's your thing. That is the way to my heart. Like, But you know what I did? um, I was familiar with um, Basquiat, but going to the exhibit in Cleveland, I definitely enjoyed more than I thought that I would. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I said out loud that I was leaving Cleveland and I was about to move possibly to Atlanta. You were the first person I told. Really? When we went to the Basquiat um, exhibit. And then uh-huh. after that, we went somewhere close, local, small, hole in the wall just to get some drinks. Uh-huh. And I was like, friend, I got something to tell you. Dang. And I told you, yep. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. What I had kind of been like preparing myself, like, hmm preparing to move and looking at things and, you know, just planning, planning a whole move out. Um, I had been doing that, but this, this was like the first time that I said it out loud to anybody. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad I was the first person to learn that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which I sent out a newsletter. Um, there are, I have some subscribers who uh, got a newsletter from me yesterday uh, just a quarter to newsletter, kind of updating people as to where I am now versus where I was when I sent out the last newsletter at the end of the year. Um, and I mentioned in there that I did not think, hold on, wait a minute, I'm trying to remember because I'll be doing a lot. I'll be doing newsletters. I'll be doing close friends. I'll be doing same difference podcast, close friends. Where did I say that thing at? What I do know I said in the newsletter was I said that I feel I, I've been I've gotten to a place where I'm starting to feel like I'm outgrowing Atlanta. Mm. Not that Atlanta is slow or there things aren't happening here. This is Atlanta, baby. It's always going to be happening in Atlanta. And I love the city. Mm -hmm. But my personal growth, I feel like, is starting to, um, Atlanta is restricting it a little bit. Really? Like I'm trying to grow, but I don't really have room. 
I can't stretch my wings. I can't move like I need to move. That's how I was feeling in Cleveland around January 2017. Mm -hmm. And I think we had gone to like the Basquiat exhibit, maybe like in March or April, something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. That that was what I said in the newsletter. And um, it's just funny because I just feel like this time of year is kind of like new. It's like a, a rebirth. It's yeah, like well, a, spring is about to sprung, you know. Yeah, and you or know, a lot of people, sprung. a lot of people say that that actually second quarter April is when the kind of newness um, that we place the we place emphasis on January first because it's a new year. But they say really it's April first, mm. and I'm starting to feel like maybe April first is more my time of newness and change and growth, and so we're gonna see. I'm with I you. just know that, like I said, I won't be, I wouldn't be surprised if I said this on the last podcast episode, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of this year, I have a new city that I live in. We'll I see. love it. I'm, I'm anxious to find out where you go. Mm-hmm. It won't be nowhere cold. Been there, done that. <laughs> okay. Won't be anywhere cold. I had said that I wouldn't mind going to the West Coast, but I kind of felt deterred from going to the West Coast just because if I wanted to get to my family quickly you know, I likely have to hop on two flights to get there. And I don't know mm-hmm. that if I want to do that. I don't know. I, I don't know. And I don't even have a people like, where you want to go? Wherever God say go, that's where I'm going. Okay. That's, what's, that's where what is best for me is. So that sounds good. I'm mm-hmm. I'm excited to, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. excited for this, to see this process unfold. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you had a good time and you enjoyed DC. Yes, ma'am. I did. And I am excited about this podcast to get into some of the things because we actually have some topics to talk about Mm -hmm. that are from a listener or someone Mm -hmm. who knows that, you know, talk to you about the podcast and a male listener at that, which Mm -hmm. makes me super excited because I always kind of get into my head about talking about certain things because I feel like we talk about this all the time but this is always discussed on podcasts and I never want things to get monotonous and mundane Mm -hmm. but um you know if this is what the people want we'll give the people what they want Mm -hmm. okay I really like it when it comes from a man too for whatever reason it just that's what y'all want to hear yeah. Well, if he, well, this is talk someone about it. Let me tell you what you want to know. Mm-hmm. You're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> He's really emotionally intelligent. He's smart. Mm. He got his head on straight. He ain't no, you know, he ain't no hit dog hollering type of thing. He's dude. single. Where he live at? He is single. <laughs> he is single and he is about to move to Washington, D.C. in a month. Okay, good for him. I wouldn't yeah. be going there, but good for him. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Um, no, but he's a, he's a good dude. I've known him for a really long time. Um, he went to the school that my mom used to work at. And so, of course, you know, he just, I love your mom. Your mom is so great, blah, blah, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and so we've always just stayed cool and stayed in touch. And so sometimes we'll we'll catch up maybe once a quarter, you know, and just kind of check in and tap in. And so he was like, yeah, I see you got started on your podcast finally. Like you finally listened to everybody that's been telling you you should be doing this. Um, he was like, and I just, I, I want to know something. I want to know, you know, you know, why y'all don't talk about this. And so basically, um, our conversation was about preferences and, you know, if you're dating someone and you guys get married and then, you know, five, 10 years down the line, your partner is becomes fat or overweight. How are you going to handle that? How do you like, how, what do you, how do you discuss that? And I was like, well, I'm going to tell you right now, like I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not here shaming anybody. I'm not body shaming anybody, but I am five, three, 140 <laughs> pounds. I'm like little. So I don't know that I can be with a big person just like ergonomically. Like, I just don't know. <laughs> what it would like. cool. You know, like. I dated someone that was 6'5", and, like, you know, we fit, but he was fucking 6'5". You know, I was climbing a tree. Like, it was, you know, mm. I know, I know, mm. I know. <laughs> um, but, like, <laughs> I know. But, all, but, you, but at the same time, like, you could you could be 6'5", and you try to date somebody that's short, and it's just, like, you're just too short. Like, it's not going to work. So, for me, like, 
you know, I'm just thinking physically that probably isn't going to work for me. And then two, I'm a, I'm a little bit, I don't want to say that I'm shallow, but I'm just, I got to be physically attracted to my person. Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, if you, like, if you want me to have the heartbeat in my shit for you, you know, and the butterflies and everything, like it's Ooh. because like you doing it for me, just I'm, I'm you doing it for me just off because I'm looking at you. Mm. Like, Ooh, nigga, you smell good. Mm. Girl, let me, let me take it a step further. Mm-hmm. I have talked to niggas on the phone and, and it's they voice me. and their voice, their voice or what they saying or how they saying it or the way they saying it to me. It's I, I am a it's sucker for a nigga with some bass in his voice. You better bury white me when you call this. It phone. ain't gotta be, it ain't gotta be very white. It ain't really, it, it's really what you're saying. Well, that's what always nice. But like, I, mm-hmm. I had a boyfriend who like his voice, you should just give me the chills. His vo- I mean, he's still, his voice is still nice to this day. It carries and it's just, de- I'm just, I am a sucker for some smooth, good shit. A good smelling nigga with a voice, with some bass in his voice. Okay. Talk to me from your balls, nigga. Like, <laughs> 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 I want to hear it from your balls. Okay. Um. <laughs> Oh my God, Pasha. <laughs> um, you know, I Man, like it. Don't just be me. I'm glad you said it because it don't just be me. No, like so, you know, so I'm I'm very much I, I was telling a friend of mine that it starts like you 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 trying to get some from a woman starts even before y'all face to face looking at each other, about to kiss and rip each other's clothes off. Like that shit has gotta be like in like you gotta you gotta set it up. Like set it mm-hmm. up. You know, me? Like, I be watching. I be watching. Just watching the nigga move. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like you need I to preheat the yeah. oven, turn uh-huh. this ain't no microwave. It don't go just ding for you. Like, you got to turn that turn that motherfucker on and preheat it. Hmm. And when I say preheat it, it means that you smell good. Your outfit looking like something. And if you got gray sweats on, you know why we like those, right? So my eyes are. You know, they're the the sweats have me directing my eyes where they need to be. To <laughs> You know, you know, and then like, you know, just, you know, is you smooth? Do you, do you know how to even like approach me when you trying to get, you know, get some action or whatever? Like, I'm just a very visual person like men. I, I feel like I'm like a nigga on the inside. I, I mean, mean, I am a nigga, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like I, like I'm a guy. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's like, it, I had, I <laughs> I had an old boyfriend and I was coming over to his house. We was about to go to the mall and he was getting dressed or whatever. And I walked in and I was just, I I was over it. I was already like one foot out the door, but I was just Mm. like the fuck out. And then I just was looking at his outfit and then like, he was trying to talk to me and he was brushing his teeth, but he had like some toothpaste in his corners. Just, just a big sloppy, sloppy, like what the fuck? And then he was like, oh, hey, babe. And he, he puts his arm around me to hug me. And I get a whiff of must. I think that was the day that I decided it was over. <laughs> Wait, he, he had just brushed his teeth? He hadn't just showered too? I don't think he showered. I think he, well, so we ended up having a discussion about it. Okay. He was trying to get his, you know, he's trying to get his fuck on. And I was just like, oh. Not smelling like a, a racehorse you can't, sir. <laughs> I, like, I, I, was, I, I, I was not, the kitty cat was dry. I was not there. I was not aroused. I wasn't feeling no kind of nothing. He was just like, well, fuck, I was drinking all night. And I was like hungover, you know, I was hungover. So I was just trying to hurry up and put myself together. And so he just slipped on some clothes and was like brushing his teeth and washing his face. But girl, mm. he put his arm around me for a hug. And it was just like. You know, like I, I, like I almost, I almost didn't make it to the mall because I was gonna faint because of the whiff that I got. Like it, I just couldn't believe when if if you're trying to get some action with me, wash your ass, <laughs> put on some deodorant. Listen, that's a whole other topic for a different podcast. And I got the stories. I would love it. You know, just, just, just. I feel like you need to present yourself in a way that's going to get desired results. 
I can't show up on the beach in a little bitty bikini thinking I'm about to just be shimmer, shimmying and shaking it. And it don't look good. But you know what? It's not just the physical aspect that is like if you're trying to get some or you're trying to do some that for for me at least i don't know if this is me i don't know if it's women i don't know if it's just both sexes but it's certain things that you do the slightest thing that will absolutely without a shadow of a doubt turn me off yeah. i'm not I'm, like so you think that you think this you think you're gonna do this and i'm still gonna want to nigga what like mm-hmm. like is that the kitty cat is, is not sexy? singing sir is that what is what you just did sexy the kitty cat is not tingling. Is it's it sexy? Not... Now, now you look in the mirror and you tell you me. Me, you tell me, is this sexy? Mm. <laughs> if the answer is no, then stop doing that shit. Thinking you go. Well, I think this is the part me. of the question that your friend had, right? About preferences. Um, preferences. And how come? How come women can say, "I don't want a fat dude. I don't want a short dude. I don't want a you know light skinned dude." You know how come? He's like, how come women and can men can't. Dude? How come women can speak about body types and what's attracted to them and men can't? He was like, you know, how am I going to tell my wife who I've been with for 10 years that she's letting herself go and I would like for her to tighten it up? And he was like, you know, I can say, hey, let's get active and work out together. I can say, let's eat this and eat that and try to like change some things up. And he said, but I, I want to make sure I stop short of offending her or making her feel like I don't desire her or want her. And he wants to know why it's not okay for men to share in those same you know gripes like mm-hmm. i love my girl i've been with her for a long time but you know it's getting, well, a, little, getting that, a little thick in the middle yeah i think that's a, like the difference between like saying something i, mean, I don't know everybody's communication is different mm-hmm. because to me if you are married you should be able to say anything you should know your partner well enough to be able to know how to say things with love yeah with but love. still get your but still get your point across yeah. without it being rude or abrasive or too harsh. Now, if you have a super sensitive partner, you should know that it just bringing up the topic of something, for example, of weight may you know weigh heavily on them. But you just have to figure out a way to reassure them. <laughs> what bringing up their weight may weigh heavily on them, and they had that only thing heavy. Their Funny. plate been a little heavy too. <laughs> Sound like. But you have to, you just got to know, you have to know your partner well enough to to know how to say things and how to bring Mm -hmm. things up. Um, Let me give you guys a great example. Okay. Let's say you and said partner, spouse, relationship, and this is conversations that you should either be having with a long-term relationship or you should be having with a spouse. Because if we are not in a long-term relationship or you're not my man, fuck you. Find you somebody that fits the mold, Mm -hmm. sweetie. Okay. Because if, if you don't see it for me, move around. Mm-hmm. You'll not just see personally. I personally can't see myself changing or adapting to something for someone who hasn't even made a commitment to me. And I'm a, at this point, I'm gonna just cut out the relationship and say spouse. Mm-hmm. But I think here's an example of of a great way to say it. Maybe for someone who has a sensitive spouse, and this is a man talking to his wife. Okay. Um, baby, I think we should start working out together because you know, as we get older. You know, our weight is changing. You know, our liquor don't, you know, slide off the same. And, you know, we starting to, you know, start to look like mom and dad, starting to look like parents. You know, um, what workouts do you think would be, would interest you the most? Because mm-hmm. I'm down to do weight, weight training. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? Yoga, Pilates, cardio? how can we fit that into our schedule? Maybe we can do it together or maybe you can do it. You know, we do it separately and that'll be our alone time. Like there's ways to do it. Don't make this situation complex and complicated because it doesn't have to be. It doesn't. But I, but I don't think that it is fair. Not, and I'm not saying this happens, but it sounds like your friend feels as though women are able to say what they like, what they don't like and how they want their man to look, how they want their man to smell, how they want their man to dress and the men, some of the men feel like they don't have the same leeway to do the same thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, me personally, I think you should absolutely tell your spouse. Remember, I cut the relationship out because mm-hmm. you niggas don't really matter. I need a ring because I'm somebody's son wife. I'm waiting on my ring. But I think that if you have a spouse, y'all should absolutely be able to talk about everything. 
uncomfortable yeah. or not. You absolutely have to do it. The communication, the breakdown of communications happens when there is no communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all got to be able to talk about that because I personally would want to know if my spouse, if that's the way my spouse presented it to me because I was getting a little thick and heavy around the midsection, I would be happy. A, I would be happy he presented it to me in the way that he did. Mm -hmm. The example I just gave. And B, let me know that I need to pull myself back together because I don't want that eye wandering too much. Hell no. Okay? Let let a girl know. Keep your eyes on me. The fuck? Yeah. And I want you. I want you to have something looking at me personally before a man can ever tell me this is just me. Before a man can tell me, oh, this is sl- sliding or that's slacking. I already know. You already peeping. Like, hmm, I think I my jeans were a little tight the other day. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm already knowing. Already knowing. Yeah, that's I, actually the one thing that I think we'll get to this later. But that's actually the one thing that scares me about having children is 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 is, is my body. Bad. It losing my shape. Uh, but yeah, back to the topic though, because I don't well, want to get too far. Um, off. I think that you know, men more or less got to they 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 are they have to suck it up and grin and bear it and more or less pretend that everything is all good. But but I feel like when you do that, then that's when your your eye wanders, and you start looking at somebody a little too long. And then you looking at that person for too long and then you go home and you don't even look at your wife no more because she's not doing it for you. And like, that's my worst. I don't want to, I don't want to let myself go and my husband be like, this ain't it no more for me. Like I, like I do not want that, but I know that that's not going to be on him. It's going to be on me. Are you drinking your water? Are you getting your exercise? Are you eating your salads, taking your yoga classes? You know, are you doing, like, are you taking, taking care of yourself? It starts with self, to be honest. And I see so many, like, you know, my, um, my explore page is changing. My suggested posts are changing just because of some of the things that I've been talking about. You know, you talk about being a wife, they start sending you married shit and Mm -hmm. you start, you know, stuff like that. But I've noticed that a lot of the couples that I see, um, that either work out together or the woman is like working out and getting her body in better condition, then the bitch end up pregnant. Yeah, because your nigga couldn't take his ass off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. That's my kind of carrying on right there. Knock me up, nigga, because you can't keep your hands (laughs) off me. I wish it could be my kind of carrying on. You know what? I have thoughts around today, but I'm just going to keep them to myself and save them for my home, girl. This is the, that's going to have to be a part of our private conversation. I can't even get at the close friends because that one is just a little, little too close to the vest. But. She said, that's my business. That's my business. <laughs> well, oh. there's, well, there's a double standard. You know, you 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 see a man or hear a man say, you know, comment on a woman's body and her appearance. They are literally they become the scum of the earth. Meanwhile, we over here like <laughs> that nigga ain't even have no cologne. No, uh. You know, and it, you know that ain't. But, but you know, a nigga can't be like, well, yo, sit down, air stink. You know how offended bitches. Oh. You know what I mean? You just gotta. Be, I thought sp- that was reserved for grandmas. Yo, sit down, air stink. I I do not want to sit next to a nigga and he'd be like, woohoo. Girl, Girl, no. No, I don't that ain't just for grandmas. I don't want anybody saying my sit down air stink. Back shot air, <laughs> sit down air, you'll walk by air. <laughs> yeah, my yep, yeah, or my back shot air. No. No. Ooh. ooh. No. We not moving. I've not that. I've not had any complaints, thank God. And please. I don't need anybody coming to the comments and being like, well, that one time you were at the zone, so I started to fuck you, and we didn't have to, okay? And you should have addressed it then, not now. Um, but yeah, girl, oh, we... I care about stuff like that. I, I do, you know, I've been looking in the mirror, and I'm like, mm-mm, your, your jeans look funny right there because you need to lose a few pounds. Listen, y'all backs can be big all summer if you want to, but a bitch like me, I skip a meal. Ain't no problem with it. A I... meal will be skipped. Okay, me drinking Prosecco means I ain't really probably get all the nourishment I needed today, and I'm fine with it. Right. Okay. (laughs) Okay with it. Okay. I I ate once today, twice today. That was it. Mm -hmm. Lunch and a like an early dinner, and I won't eat anything for you know the rest of the night. So. And I know everybody body metabolizes things different, but I've learned. I just really have learned my body because I do eat 
well and I exercise regularly. Uh, if I like, okay, so for example, somebody had mentioned to me, this guy had mentioned to me about a, a pineapple upside down cake, cheesecake, which is actually my favorite cheesecake at the Cheesecake Factory. But I make pineapple upside down cake, just regular, not the cheesecake, but just. So when he mentioned it, it, it kind of stuck in my mind. For days, I was on a pineapple upside down cheesecake. One slice of it from a uh, cheesecake factory is like 1,200 calories. Jesus. Okay, more calories in that one slice of cheesecake thing, you should eat it an entire day. Yeah. So I said, I don't want to go get the slice of cheesecake. Because Cheesecake Factory, two blocks from my house, okay? I said, I'm going to make my own pineapple upside down cheesecake. And I'm going to, instead of making the whole cake like I normally do, I made them in the little cupcake tins as minis. Oh, cute. Okay. Um, the batter ended up making 30 of them. <laughs> Who finna be in this bitch eating 30 pineapple upside down cakes? <laughs> Not a bitch that don't want her back to be big this summer. <laughs> so after a certain number, I just had to cut myself off and the rest going in the trash. That's just mm. what happens when you're a single girl. You know, you get you you cook and you you get tired of eating something over and over and over. So you just have to let it go. I let it go yeah. because I'm not going to be uncomfortable in my skin. I'm not, I don't have to wait for nobody to tell me, baby, <laughs> Your back old. is big. Right. Right. I'm already knowing. Right. I'm already knowing. So after, you know, a couple of days of eating pineapple upside down cake minis and I got on the scale and it was a number that I don't like to see often. We're cutting it back. A bitch been in this. I've been. I know my body well enough that I know that I can just cut out the carbs and do high protein. I've been in this bitch eating boiled eggs and sausage for days. Okay, <laughs> high protein. No, mm -mm, no bread, no rice, no pasta, none of that. Nothing. And guess where my weight is? Back to where she belongs. <laughs> back so now I can have prosecco. Belong. Now I can have prosecco. And I would want somebody to tell me, mm -hmm. like. If for whatever reason I'm so consumed, because let's be honest, a lot of the times a woman's weight fluctuates when she has children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so maybe she is so consumed in taking care of the home and her husband and her baby that she, that she care herself. herself, right? She's an afterthought. She's not even thinking of herself first. Mm -hmm. I want a nigga to tell me. Mm -hmm. I want a nigga to tell me. Yeah. That's just me, though. And don't say it nasty. Don't be mean and nasty, though. Yeah. Don't do that. But say it in a way, say it with love, because I would appreciate that. And also, let me tell y'all, let me, let me share y'all, share something with you all that crosses my mind often. When I have my kids, my husband and I are going to have a sit down conversation and he will have to know, while I am helping build your legacy, it's going to be some stipulations. When people say they want a push gift, my push gift is, do I want to share this with y'all or should I keep this with me and my husband? What do you think, Brian? I mean, I, I mean, we're this, somebody might be listening to this and be like, this is a great conversation that I think I need to have with my husband. So share with us. Okay. My, you can call it a put. I don't give a fuck what you call it. Just know it's got to be done. I want a personal trainer for 90 days. Once I'm cleared to work out, I need a personal trainer for 90 days that will come to me. I'm not going to the gym. Mm -hmm. I just had a baby. I'm not doing nothing I don't want to do. I don't want to go anywhere. 90 days, I want a personal trainer and a meal prep for the first 90 days after I have my baby once I'm cleared to work out. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, once I finish having my said kids, be prepared to pay somebody's doctor because I'm getting on the table. We not finna pretend like I'm gonna exercise that fucking fupa away. It's not gonna happen. I'm getting cut off and sucked up. And that's just that. Okay? Y'all be in the gym trying to... It's not going nowhere, boo. It's not. Get it taken off. Just get, get it, it taken off. off. So I need my husband to have your coin ready. Yeah. Have your money correct. Have your money ready and right. Because that's what's gonna happen in order for me to help you build your legacy. Because the baby's not gonna have Jordan as their last name. Right. And I would like to say the last name I want them to be, but you know, niggas don't act right. So when it has that, that the, the daddy's last name, I'm helping you build your legacy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need the personal trainer, the meal prep. And that's, at, that's personal trainer. Meal prep is after each baby. Mm -hmm. However many I had, that's mm -hmm. after each baby. 
I would like at least, you know what, we that's, we'll say that for my husband. But after I'm done, like all the way done, done having babies. She said, I'm getting, I'm getting my shit back snatched. Cause that's the only life I know. <laughs> oh, okay? period, period. I was born with body. <laughs> okay. I look like this my whole life. Period. I'm going to get back to that. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, when you marry somebody, you know, they didn't sign up for you 50 pounds later. They signed up for this and this is, you know, for me, I'm like, I want to maintain what my husband signed up for, you know, even, even after children, I, I, I want, I just, I like to look, I want to look good naked just for me, just for me. Like, Ooh, girl, look at that little, that little lingerie set you got on this cute hat. And that's the thing for, for me. me. It ain't even really. It ain't even really about looking good for my husband. No, it's for my me. husband is going to get the benefit of me looking good for me. Exactly. You just, exactly. you just get part two. Mm-hmm. But I want to look good for me. I want to look a certain way, and I don't think that there's anything wrong. Since we having a conversation, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look how you want to look. Right. You want to lay on the table and get your fupa snatched off and your stomach sucked in. Mm-hmm. Do it if that's what's going to make you happy. Do it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do it. But what if you have a partner that, you know, is resistant to eating better and working out after you've tried to gently suggest, you know, that we <sighs> tighten it up? How do you deal That's with tough. that? How do you, how do you deal with, hey, I don't know how much nicer I need to be, but fucking get it together and eat a salad like i feel like if you tell your spouse in with love in the kindest way possible that you know that would resonate with them and they still don't get it a little tough love might be necessary Mm -hmm. hey you know i love you i love how you manage our family i love how you take care of our kids Mm -hmm. i love how you you know keep our house together but I loved how you looked and I think we can do something about it together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not falling out of love with you, but there's some attraction that, you know, I would like to stay in our relationship. Yes. Come on with the words, girl. There's a way. Yes. Yes. I told y'all I'm somebody wife. I am ready. It's a a delicate thing. It's, It's a delicate conversation. It's, you know, it's a hard conversation. Um, and. And you know what? Sometimes maybe the, maybe. Because again, y'all remember, we're going to get to us in talking about the men. We know we kind of went back and forth on it. But right now we're talking about the men who are trying to figure out a way to say this to their wives. Or their girls while or you whoever. Think it may be, it may, while you say again. Their girls or whoever. Because when he was, he was talk. I mean, he was telling me that when he has conversations with their friends, I don't, I don't know that all of his friends are married. I don't know. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing that these are people that are in long-term relationships or these are people like he, he said, he was like, I, he said, I went on a trip and eh, you know what I'm going, you know, you know what I under, I'm, I'm glad he posed the question, but I'm going to label my commentary for the spouses. And the reason mm-hmm. that I say that is because how dare you be telling a woman that you're not attracted to her nigga. I ain't attracted you without this fucking ring. We in a long-term relationship for how long? And you ain't married me. Walk me down the aisle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I'm quite sure. This is the thing. Like how, how long do it take to know that somebody is somebody, the person you want to spend the rest of your life with? Like, how do y'all be in relationships with people for five and six years and y'all still, you know what? Uh, let me not get off the trip. Off the Shit, I was in a Let's relationship see. for five years. and he, that How old were you though, friend? How old were you though? Oh, 23 until I was see, 28. We, uh, uh, we are talking about our big age. Yeah. We 36. Yeah. Okay. We 36. If you have been with someone since 31 and you are now 36. And not what's married. Happening? Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. happening? Shit. What are y'all doing? the fuck what are y'all doing particularly if you already have children with said person yeah 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 but that's another conversation for another day is but um i just think that you know some stuff i would like to reserve for husbands Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know some of y'all want to be a part of the conversation and you just can't you can give your opinion But it's only going to carry you so far, just like when people try to tell me, well, you don't have kids, so you can't say this fair. You know what? Can't relate. Like I told y'all last week, can't relate. Okay. 
some of these conversations y'all are having, a woman would dare you to have the conversation about how they look in their way because it's like, you unattracted to me because of my way, but I'm unattracted to you because you're not my husband. Okay. (laughs) Well, I thought it was really interesting that he brought that up because he does feel like there's a double standard, Um, you know, and I think this was all born out of him asking me, like, where are you at? How do you feel, you know, when you're dating someone? What, you know, what gets you going? And I was sharing that with him and I was, you know, kind of sharing like, oh, you know, some of the things that just really bother me or that kind of turned me off and he was laughing he was just like see niggas case he was like niggas talk about this with their friends but we can't we can't you know we can't say shit like this to women like it's frowned upon and i just want to know like why i don't know it's frowned upon i think it's just a difficult conversation to be and they don't and niggas don't know how to have it right i just gave gave y'all a game in the sauce so y'all know how y'all gotta do it now the way y'all be listening and getting yo fucking uh asshole in and not about what joy got to say i hope you listen to this okay i hope you listen to this yeah you know but the one of the most important things though is 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 having being in in relationship partnership marriage with someone who is your friend someone you have fun with someone that you love like genuinely love not have love for but somebody that you love and are in love with and that you have commu- good communication with yeah now there are a lot of people who are not good communicators but they have a partnership with someone who they can communicate with Mm -hmm. because the person understands their love language. Mm -hmm. They are patient with them. They know how to pull it out of them. You should be in relation with someone like that Mm -hmm. because if you are, it makes these types of difficult conversations much easier to have. Yeah. You know how to do, you know how to have the conversation out of love. You know, the mm -hmm. words to say, and you know, you know when to bring this topic up, you know, you know, you know, maybe, maybe, Maybe at the end of the end of the day, the time of the day that is best for you and your spouse is when y'all kind of like laying in a bed, going over the end of your day, you know, guards are all the way down and you can gently bring this up. I'm giving y'all the game. Get your notepads out and write it down if it helps. Mm -hmm. Okay. For some people, it's going to be when you are having dinner because wifey just cooked. Okay. Okay. And sis laid it out, okay? She didn't fry the chicken. Mm-hmm. She got the mashed potatoes and gravy. She made some cornbread, all right? She got some corn. And all of those are high in starch. Perfect time to bring it up. <laughs> like, Maybe I don't, need this I don't know how much longer I can keep eating like this, babe. Mm-hmm. See? You know, we getting old. You know, we, Come on. We getting old. Come and on. I don't know. We might need to incorporate some more salads. Meatless some Sunday. Salad. No some shrimp. Just fish only. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stop eating that bullshit. Mm-hmm. For real, for mm-hmm. real. Well, yeah, I thought that it was really cute that uh, he brought that up because he was like, I, you know, I would be listening to your podcast and maybe this is something y'all could talk about. And I'm like, okay, I let, love me write, it. let me write I it down. It. Let me I write down it. your little suggest. Thank you, Mr. Suggestion Box. Like, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Suggestion. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Thank you. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Oh, yeah. Um, speaking of double standards... There's been something that's been dominating the headlines that is legit textbook definition a double standard. I know my friend, and I already know where you're going. Come on with it, friend. I'm ready. <laughs> so, Let's get to it. For those of you that follow the sports, um, there these last few weeks, it's, well, it's March Madness. It's April now, but um, the women's final four was going on all weekend. And then last night, was it last night or Sunday? You know, it was Sunday. Yeah, Sunday afternoon was the championship game. And it was between um, Iowa State and Louisiana State University. And there has, and shout out to LSU, they won. Um, go Tigers. Um, shout out to the black women. Yeah. Shout out to the black school. <laughs> Yes. Shout out to to Angel Reese. Is that her name? Angel Reese. Yes. And all the other women on the team. Shout out to the coach. Yes. Shout out to the students. Shout out to all of y'all. Their first title, championship title in the school's history. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it's been like this incredible celebratory momentous occasion for obvious reasons. 
for obvious reasons, but um, there's been a lot of uh, conversation that I feel like has overshadowed the achievement. And it's related to um, Angel Reese and how she chose to celebrate this historic, you know, an amazing win. Um, there was a little bit of trash talk and a little bit of taunting, if you will. And, you know, the headlines these days, you know, today are saying that she was showing poor sportsmanship. She was exhibiting classless behavior, that she should have been a little bit more humble with her win and that she didn't need to taunt uh, Caitlin Clark, who is the uh, amazing shooter on uh, Iowa State's team. Great basketball player, great gowns, beautiful gowns, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, but the problem is Caitlin Clark was exhibiting this same unsportsmanlike, classless, you know, non-humble behavior to the girls when they were playing South Carolina. <laughs> And no one, not one headline, sports reporter, no one said that Caitlin was exhibiting, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct. Nobody said anything negative about her. Those, those weren't even the headlines. You know, the, they were proud of her. She played a great game. Um, good for her. You know, they wanted this to be a Cinderella story. Like if she was, if she was able to take her team all the way and win the championship, th there wouldn't have been any comments about her doing the, you can't see me and where's my ring. Like nobody would have even said anything. No one was saying anything about it to begin with, but the minute right. these young, beautiful, talented, skilled black women played this game. Whoop black. Ass. Let's just make sure we say that part. Black women and whoop they ass too. Like it's it's not like it's it's not they like they want like one super close game. They they got their ass whooped a little bit, but a lot of bit. It was a game that was played and won fair and square. Every single athlete there there is some sort of trash talk taking place. I'm, I don't feel like women's basketball should be exempt from these girls, you know, letting their competitive spirit show, whether it is, you know, making gestures or talking shit or saying something. This is just the nature of the game. The women, the men's basketball players do it. I don't know why it's any different because we're women. If anything, the women are probably even that much more emotional because we're fucking women and we want to win. You know, we are, we are on a, a huge stage, but anyway, there were so many white reporters saying all of these just derogatory and disparaging things. And it's just like, damn. F an idiot was the one a that got me. Keith Olbermann called Angel Reese a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. You are a grown ass white man. And this girl is all of what, 20 years old? I believe she's a sophomore. And you felt the need to re retweet and say a fucking idiot and, and, and speak about her that way. But has zero words for Caitlin Clark. Zero. Well, I tell, tell you, Twitter, something. Twitter has been dragging the fuck out of every single white that has been critical of the LSU basketball team and the way they chose to celebrate this. When they have been dragging the ever living fuck out of every single, and when I tell you that shit is well deserved, well deserved, because what you're not going to do is ignore the same shit that this white girl was doing not even 48 hours ago, and then try to admonish this other young lady for doing the exact same thing. And she had every right to do so. She had every right to do so. I cannot believe, yeah, the, the, I can't um, believe the language that was used, the vitriol, it just, just mm -hmm, how nasty mm -hmm. everyone was. Because they never referred to white women that way. I think, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the never that. Idiot. Who the fuck it, are you never, talking about? It's never that tone. It's never. It's never that demeaning um, attitude or energy. You know what? I am just again. I said it last week. I'm gonna say it forever. Black men, I love y'all. Because if I had been Angel Reese, and that white man had to call me a fucking idiot, oh baby, my daddy would have been looking for your ass. Uh huh. <laughs> That's number one. Because how dare you, a grown ass man, be talking about a woman like these that? are children. Are you serious? These are children. You gotta be broken. People are forgetting that these are children. I don't give a fuck if these girls are 5'10", 6'1", whatever, and they appear to be grown women. These are college-age children. And you know what? As you were talking, friend, I was just remembering. I remember when my brother was growing up, 
my brother uh, played soccer growing up and he was great. And I ain't just saying that because he's my brother. Mm -hmm. The nigga was bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bad on the field. At the end of the day, everybody talking about my brother Mm -hmm. and what he did and the goals that he scored. And my brother had this attitude of he was that nigga. Because he was. He was really that nigga on the field. And I can remember how people um, would whisper and stare and point and, and, um, you know, have side back conversations about, you know, how um, he was a, what's the word? What's the word that they say it? He was um, not, it wasn't sportsmanship. It was um, basically that he was just like super arrogant. That was the word. Mm. So, so him, so if he wins, he does a good job. Okay. He practices the sport. He does a good job. He dominates on the field and he helps his team win. What do you want him to do? Not celebrate? Right. How should he behave? <clears throat> like you should he hang his head down and walk around and not, no, he not being arrogant. He's being a winner. Mm-hmm. And I feel the same mm-hmm. way about Angel Reese. Y'all want black women to be humble when they win, but be ever so gracious when they lose. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. I knew, I knew LSU was going to win. First of all, I just knew LSU was going to win. But I don't know if you saw the viral video of the uh, Iowa team listening to some music as they uh-huh. were warming up and uh-huh. stretching. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then you went to LSU. And they was in there playing Boosie Badass. Uh-huh. You want to talk to you run your mouth? I was like, I even knew the names. <laughs> right. But I was really, um, I was very uh, proud. Mm-hmm. I was just very proud. Um, of the way Angel Reese handled herself mm-hmm. and what she said when the camera was on her mm-hmm. and the mic was on and she had the stage and the spotlight to say what she needed to say. And she said, this was bigger than me. Mm-hmm. This was for, you know, y'all been calling me hood and ghetto the whole way through, but this mm-hmm. was bigger than me. This is for the girls that look like me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sis. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. Because we Do your won. thing. <laughs> you better keep celebrating. We won. If they call you arrogant, keep on celebrating. Okay. If they say you a bad sport, keep on celebrating. If they say you ghetto, keep on celebrating. And we're going to keep on celebrating you. So what, my question is, what would you call Caitlin's behavior? I'll wait. I saw a tweet that said, I saw a tweet that said, white folks been talking about about classless behavior and they had class since the beginning of time. Hello. And they ain't. Hello. And they ain't. They yeah. like a, who, who you guys aren't even an indicator of fucking class. What do you mean? Mm. Classless mm. of fucking yeah, they're idiot? literally the epi- they they are actually the epitome of a bad sport. Mm-hmm. Cause like like they say, it's cool when they do it, but it's a problem when we do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wild shit. Yeah, it's been crazy to like see mm-hmm. you know, people, you know, the headlines just kind of go. <laughs> And, and then the, the, the kind of the, the kind of spoken the kind of spoken but unspoken oh, thing yeah, you know we can language tip, we can tiptoe around things if we want to well y'all can tiptoe around shit but let's just call the ace of ace and a spade a spade yep okay the truth is just the truth and shine a light on it's just a good a bunch of good old-fashioned racism happening right now and you think us motherfuckers okay. don't know i'm because tired of society, people being black society, people are stupid so, we're not stupid society, Society saw this game as the whites against the blacks. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Okay, that's what y'all saw. Oh y'all yeah. saw the white girls on F for Iowa and the black girls for LSU, and it was really a competition of race. Uh huh. It wasn't. It was more so a competition of race than it was a competition of schools. Yep. And skill. That's really what this was about. Yep. Yeah. But we see who the elite elite race was in the game now, don't we? Mm-hmm. And that's really why y'all mad, mm-hmm. cause y'all lost. And it wasn't just when I say y'all and one just Iowa, it was y'all, mm-hmm. the white folks, mm-hmm. because that's what y'all made this about. Y'all made it whites versus blacks. Yep, yep. I don't think that we will ever see a day, and 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 you know, if I'm wrong, that would be a great thing. I don't think we'll ever see the day where it won't be that way. Them against us. Mm-hmm. That's just what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But let me tell y'all who's going to get y'all. Let me tell you what's going to get folks together or what's getting them together now. And I don't have enough research on this, but I'm going to mention it. Maybe I'll talk about it on the next episode. But the fact that every other country is strategically cut in the United States 
out of these deals. The U.S. dollar ain't finna be worth shit, mm -hmm. okay? We got all these other countries, India, China, Russia, Venezuela, all these other places are now beginning to make trades and do deals and cutting the United States currency out. The U.S. dollar isn't even at the epitome, the height of what it used to be. Mm -mm. Y'all so worried about trying to keep black folks down in your country mm -hmm. that you didn't realize all the other countries was looking at what the fuck y'all was doing. Okay, countries of, with people of color. Yep. Because yep. is anybody paying attention to that? Okay, these are countries where people of color are the dominant race mm -hmm. cutting y'all out because y'all act a fucking monkey in y'all own damn country. Mm -hmm. Okay? Y'all so discriminatory against black people against people who are of other religions than the norm, the standard, mm -hmm. people who are of other sexuality, uh, 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 who love people who are the same sex. Mm -hmm. Y'all got such an issue with that within your own country that people started to see that around the world and then cut y'all out of deals. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel for us, because we're the ones that's going to suffer, mm -hmm. the citizens. Our dollars ain't going to be worth shit. Nope. I wonder what it's going to look like in five to ten years when people continue to travel. And they take their U.S. dollars to places and they realize we can get all this stuff because the currency is so much different that, you know, our dollar gets us so much. Yeah, it ain't going to be that way for, for too much longer, okay? Kamala Harris is riding around Africa, okay, in South Africa talking to people about, you know, democracy and fair and this. Bitch, you ain't even got that in your own country. Right, Trying to talk no. to somebody else's country about it. What? That's crazy. But okay. I'll have to do some reading on that. I haven't heard about any deals we were getting cut Friend, out of. And you better get up to speed. Well, well, I've okay. Been like, I've been watching CNN, but all they're talking about is Trump and how he's allegedly going to turn himself in. That's kind of what, that's what, what I'm seeing. Okay. Next week. I want everyone to put it on. I run the show though. right now. Next week, we're going to talk about the currency. Mm hmm. We're going to talk about the U.S. dollar losing its value, mm -hmm. okay? And when I say losing its value, again, when we travel to, let's say, Cancun, Mexico, mm -hmm. when we go to Cancun, Mexico, and we get our dollars converted to pesos, mm -hmm. you know, what one dollar here is maybe worth, you know, $15 in Mexico, mm -hmm. and the way that they're doing these deals around the country and cutting us out, it's making the dollar less valuable yep so where we could take our one dollar and it may be worth fifteen dollars somewhere else now that one dollar is now going to be maybe worth three dollars mm -hmm. mm. somewhere else it's becoming less valuable Ooh, nasty in work. addition to in addition to the fact that people around the country can see our our finances fall falling by you know falling by yeah. the wayside they can see our shit is in fucking shambles yep Okay, they can see that, you know, the recession, even McDonald's. I see McDonald's this week. They have closed all the, the CDs companies and got so smart. They say, you niggas won't shoot this motherfucker up. Oh, Y'all shoot them schools up if you want to. You won't come in this office acting a damn monkey. Okay, because you lost your job. Wow. McDonald's has closed all of their corporate offices this week everyone is working from home and by wednesday or thursday of this week they're gonna let people know who has a job and who doesn't you didn't hear about this girl hell no they have told everybody to cancel all of your meetings okay only work from home within the company okay and wednesday or thursday we'll let you know who's been cutting who hasn't damn yeah mcdonald's we talking about a global company. I know. Not a U.S. based company, a global company. As far as I know, McDonald's got its McDonald's on Mars for all I know. Okay. Right. Well, but you yeah. know what's interesting? I went to Scotland over spring break when I was in college. I was 19. So this was some years ago. And my friend, my college bestie who I visited in DC, her sister went to school at St. Andrews University. It's in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, it's the school that um, Prince William and Princess mm. Kate went to, but whatever. Okay. I don't like them. I'm team Harry and Meghan. Um, they, uh, so we went over there for spring break. I spent 10 days over there. And uh, what they do is like, if you're hosting someone and you know, they're visiting, you have a, like a coming out party and not that kind of coming out, but like, Hey, this is my <laughs> sister. This is my sister's friend. They're here from the States, yada, yada, yada. And so the conversation was very intellectual, you know, they would, they, you know, it was, it was a dinner party. Okay. Like okay. We were, we were, they were talking about politics, all kinds of shit. 
And the one thing that I will never, ever, ever forget, and this has stuck with me ever since, was one guy was like, I feel like uh, you guys in the U.S. are very self-centered. You guys only care about what's going on in the U.S. You have no idea what's going on in any other country. And he was like, I know what's going on in your country and how George Bush, because it was, what was it, George Bush? It was George Bush at the time. Um, he was like, I know that, um, you know, he's a he's a sucky president. And, you know, that he's more or less, you know, having some issues and, you know, but I, he's like, but I also know what's going on here. I know what's going on in Africa and I know what's going on, you know, everywhere mm -hmm. else. He's like, but, you, mm -hmm. he's like, but you guys have no idea what's going on in Germany or you guys have no idea what's going on in Taiwan. I mean, he was just very like, self-absorbed. And I was just, I was just thinking to myself, like, damn, yeah, I don't know shit about what y'all got going on over here, but I know what's going on in the U.S. <laughs> But that just speaks to, you know, your point, like we are so consumed with everything, well, with everything that's going on in the U.S. that no one is even realizing that we're being cut out of shit on a global level. Like mm -hmm. we're supposed to be like. Because like you said, we so worried about Trump getting indicted. Yeah. And he's going to be arraigned or turn himself in or something or other tomorrow. Well, and people don't even realize how he's going to do it. Like, no, get girl, the handcuffs like every fucking body else. Girl, fuck all that. I believe it when I see it. I ain't even worried about that. But like you said, <laughs> right, right. we're not even paying attention to the fact that not only are we currently in a recession in our country, like, I don't even know why people keep talking about, oh, when we get in a recession, bitch, we in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in the recession. We've been in the recession, truth be told, since summer of 2022, mm -hmm. when the gas was sky fucking hot. Girl, and people couldn't and even egg. drive up the street. We've been in a recession. But we so worried about Trump getting indicted, and is it going to mean he's going to be able to run for president, that we aren't even paying attention to the fact that there are literal, literal heads of countries having meetings round table discussions and the united states is not represented mm -mm. there is no one at the table for our country mm -mm. no one they are cutting us out okay that's a big deal i can't deal. wait until now i'm not gonna say i can't wait because I, I don't want to see our country fall because mm -hmm. i'm a part of this country right okay whether i am you know, somebody who is ostracized or treated treated unfairly. I do live in the United States. This is the country that I'm I'm from. This is where I was born. So I never want to see us falter. However, when it happens, when it happens, mm -hmm. it's going to be very interesting to see how things unfold. Mm -hmm. Because the other countries are they are what they're they're creating. You know, there is the uh, what's it called the United Nations. But it seems mm -hmm. to be that they're forming their own sort of alliance and allegiance to one another where they are all comfortable cutting us out mm -hmm. of the deal. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're doing trades, you know, whether it's for goods or oils or materials, and the United States isn't involved. They're training in... What's the, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't want to say it incorrectly, but I'm just going to say it just for the sake of the conversation. But the, um, I believe it's Indian currency called rupees. Or rupees Rupee? or something. Rupee is being traded. Um, but, you know, all of the trades that are being discussed and that are being done do not include the United States dollar. And all of the trades were being based on the United States dollar. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like, for people who don't really understand what that means is the example that I gave of if we take our $1 somewhere like Mexico and it can be technically worth 15 in their eyes. Mm -hmm. If they're trading in a lower currency, that means that our one dollar may now only be worth in other places fifty cent, thirty cent. Whew. Which means we have to pay more to get the same goods. I don't really think people really understand the whole thing. So, you know, when shit starts to hit the fan, we'll revisit episode 19 <laughs> and you can remember. That Joy's Joy be talking shit, but she be making sense at the same time. Mm -hmm. We'll mm -hmm. revisit it. It's 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 something that I'm paying attention to just because I um do business overseas for the finished look, and I've actually been talking to two vendors. Um, and God, which I don't even want to say the city's wrong. One is in India, and one is in China, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm really trying to just you know foster and rebuild some relationships. Uh, because I'm gonna need them, right? Okay. Right. 
when this currency starts to change and things don't look, you know, dollars and cents ain't looking like I'm used to them looking, you know? So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I well, well. I don't know. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. What else you got, girl? What else you got? Well, I know something else that was on our runner show. This is kind of something that we were talking about. Um, I don't know if it was supposed to be like a piggyback off of um, having tough conversations with spouses mm-hmm. about, you know, preferences and things that we want to we want to see. Which maybe we can do a deeper dive in that mm-hmm. down the line because that's kind of like mm, I think that yeah. this. It, even talking about this, we'll, we're going to be on here for a whole another hour. Mm-hmm. And I just, it's so many layers. It is very layered um, because, you know, just marriage in general, just committing to anybody is like, when you commit to somebody, you're committing to them right then for who they are, what they look like, what they do, what they have in that moment. Mm-hmm. And as life progresses and things change, do you still want that person? Do you still love that person? Do you still see them the same? Mm-hmm. But one thing that we kind of um, had, we had on our run of show, which I guess was just a piggyback off of that very layered conversation was unlearning behaviors. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we had that have been maybe passed down from generations from our parents. Um, do you have a behavior that you've had to unlearn that you learned from your parents that you've had to unlearn to just be a more uh, productive or a more um, emotionally stable adult? Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of my own too. Mine is related to eating, eating hmm. habits. Okay. And, you know, realizing that the older I get, I have to be careful, you know, of what, what I'm consuming, how much I'm consuming. And, you know, I, you know, my, I don't, I don't ever recall, you know, my, my family, they weren't people who like were in the gym or had gym memberships. Hmm. You know, but, and I feel like had I seen that, I'd be a little bit more um, locked in. You know, it, it, it would be a lifestyle that would, that I, that would just, it would just be a lifestyle, mm-hmm. you know, but my parents' lifestyle did not really include, you know, working out and, you know, actually going outside and engaging in like physical activity as a means to, you know, get the blood flowing and, you know, to work on our muscles and, you know, shit like that. So as I got older and, you know, would want to go out and do certain things or wear certain things, I had to really like stop and then, well, well, bitch, you have to go to the gym. You have to go to the gym and you have to eat more salad and you have to increase your water intake. Like, you know, there, there are, a lot of different things that I did not know about because they weren't anything that I learned at home. They were things I learned outside of the home. And then that, and then that goes hand in hand. And there was so much stuff that I learned at home that I had to unlearn once I was out on my own, because, you know, I I don't want to say that it was bad, but it was, there was no, no good was going to come from main, from keeping up that behavior. You know, even just, you know, I've been saying, for, for months now, how I'm going to give up drinking and give up drinking, but alcoholism runs in my family. So it is actually something that I am cognizant about mm-hmm. and, and think about mm-hmm. quite a bit because I don't want to get, I don't want to consume myself in so much alcohol that I just have to have it. Or when I drink, right. I get way too, you know, I have to drink a lot every time I drink instead of maybe just having one drink or one little cocktail and calling it a day. Like I don't have to go out. And, you know, socializing doesn't mean that I have to have five drinks. I can have a couple yeah. of drinks and keep it cute and be done with it. So that's what, so my, my, uh, my behavior. Oh, and also uh, the way I choose to handle conflict. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about that. Um, you know, I just, I'm not always someone that wants to be like raw, raw, raw in the moment. You know, I, you know, if, if like when I was a teenager and me and my mom would get into it, like I, oh, you mad and you got an attitude. Well, I'm not going to talk. 
So I'm not going to talk to you. You know, I'm more or less, you know, walking on eggshells and, and trying to keep the peace. You know, you, you, I can tell you're mad. So I'm not about to sit up here and be like, well, hey, mom, how's your day? How you doing? Just so you can give me one word answers or be stank or, you know, make a smart ass comment. I'm just going, I'm just going to go upstairs to my room and close the door, mm. you know, and, and, and that, you know, used to drive my mom up the wall because she likes to communicate and talk. And mm-hmm. so it was, it was always a struggle for her, you know, because why isn't my daughter speaking to me? And it's like, well, I don't want to talk to you because I'm fucking mad. So mm-hmm. let me, let, let me be mad and let me have a moment before we have to talk about this again. Like you can't sit up here and be yelling at me and saying shit and then be like, give me a hug. I don't want to hug you. Right. You know, I don't like that. I don't like that. Right. I don't like, uh, that emotional warfare. I don't like that, you know, getting mad at me and putting me in, you know, putting me in this place emotionally and then turning around and being like, well, I want to show you love and I need you to, you need to embrace it because I'm showing you love right now. No, I need you to, I need you to give me some space right now and let me kind of figure that out. And so I think that when I have children and we have to have some hard conversations I don't want it to be this, I don't want it to, I don't want my kids to find themselves in a situation where they don't want to talk to me or they can't talk to me. There's a way to discipline and handle conflict and not, you know, do the, well, I'm the mama and this is what the fuck I said. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. what you said. I ain't deaf. I heard you. I, I clearly you're upset. I get it. But also the way you're choosing to handle this is not going to, is not helpful to our relationship moving forward. My name is Joy, and I'd like to play devil's advocate for just a moment. Because <laughs> y'all know I do this. Um, so first, let me start off by saying that we have to remember, as we have, you know, we're 36, and I feel like at our 36, there's things that there's things that different, different generations got. Mm-hmm. I feel like the bills our parents was paying at 36 for the money they was making is much different from the bills we paying mm-hmm. at 36 and the money that we making okay however i also feel like the emotional maturity we have at 36 our parents likely didn't have mm-hmm. at 36 i would say our parents didn't have and the reason that i say that is the example that you just mentioned our parents scolding us or you know saying something to us that was unfavorable and it's like well give me a hug it's like no Right. It's not the time for that. And maybe if you have been emotionally mature to speak to me in a way that, like I mentioned earlier, when a husband comes to his wife with love and from a place of love about her weight, if our parents had came to us um, with a little bit more love and a little bit less, you know, stop that fucking crying if I give you something to cry about, yeah, or, you know, that type of energy, it would have been better received. However, what I will say is we have to remember as we are 36 and we're growing, there's a lot of things that we have the uh, uh, opportunity to do that our parents didn't or was a little bit, it's, it was more shunned than like therapy. Therapy is a big thing in our in our know, our yeah. age group, in our community at this point. That wasn't the same. It wasn't the same when my mom and dad was 36. Right. We have to be able to give our parents grace Mm -hmm. because there's going to be things that we do to our children in this moment right now Mm -hmm. that in 30 years our kids is going to call it a fucking trauma Mm -hmm. and we're going to feel like we did the very best we could at the time with what we had and with the the circumstances that we were presented with so that's the first thing we have Mm -hmm. to give our parents grace i am down for and i I completely grace but i'm still still yeah i ain't gonna do this okay the same way she and that's fair and she that's fair. Their thing, my my mom will beat me with a switch, and I always said I wouldn't do my kids like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, but you mm-hmm. still beat us. Mm-hmm. This wasn't with a switch. You know what I mean? Right now, I got beat with I got beat with a switch. I remember very vividly mm-hmm. things being in my grandma's kitchen flow because she had just snatched that switch mm-hmm. up off that tree, and she was ready to tear our asses up Mm -hmm. and it's not that i think less of my grandma right you know for doing that i understand that that was her way Mm -hmm. okay that was that was how she grew up that was what she knew Mm -hmm. so that was the way she knew to discipline her grandkids or kids but now that time has has lapsed and, and we have evolved we know that there are other ways to do things but that's what i mean about giving our parents grace Mm -hmm. You only know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. Right. They didn't know 
therapy. They didn't know. Now, I ain't going to say gentle parenting because a lot of that y'all just be letting y'all kids walk all over there. Some of these kids need a swift slap to the mouth. Mm-hmm. Let's be the slap. Got, I won't be gentle there. parenting shit. Yeah, I'm not doing that. No. But I also maybe Sit your ass be- down like I said. <laughs> <laughs> I also won't be beating my baby with an extension cord. Right. That's just something that I'm not going to do. That I, I raise my hand. Scared you. Yeah, that I did experience growing up. I'm all for being a stern parent and being a firm parent. Like, I believe in giving your child a look and them knowing to get your shit together mm-hmm. quick. Okay? I'm all for that. But, um, yeah, I just feel like, you know, a lot of times when we talk about unlearned behaviors, parents get this bad rap. And I'm not saying everybody parents weren't toxic and weren't, mm-hmm. you know, you know, bad or abusive or whatever the case may be. But a lot of it, a lot of the traumas that we feel now, we feel like we're going to do so much better. Our children will say in 30 years that it was a trauma for them. People do the best. People do the best. People do the best they can in the moment with what they have and the circumstances that they're presented with. Yeah. Um, But I also have some, um, some, some, some things that I had to unlearn from my parents, like you, alcoholism runs in my family. And I don't think that it's ever been anything that I've like struggled with, but in the back of my mind, it's always something that's there. Mm -hmm. It's something that I think about. Mm -hmm. And that goes for not just alcohol, that goes for drug use as well. I always am very cognizant of being, of where I am and who I'm around and what's, what's, you know, what is this? this dynamic consists of Mm -hmm. if it consists of drugs, I don't participate. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like I'm an addict in recovery and I have to be, you know, not putting myself in spaces and situations that would, that would cause me to relapse because I know that those sort of things are in my family. And I know that I have an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. I don't never want to turn the gene on that. I can't turn off. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's something that's always in the back of my mind that's a that's a that's a behavior that i haven't had to unlearn but i've learned it through trauma yeah do that make sense yeah um yeah. let's see what's another unlearn i i realized in relationships oh child it's a big one it's a big one for me because you know i'm actively dating i don't even know if i can call it dating y'all i don't know what this thing is i'm doing sometimes i feel like You're it's dabbling I don't know if I want to dabble, friend, because honestly, y'all, maybe there's some conversation for another day, too. But honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm last week when we talked about um, contributing to our own misery. Mm-hmm. A lot of times in dating, I feel like I'm contributing to my own misery because I date in a way that most people don't. Mm-hmm. And I date, I date, I date in monogamy. Mm. I find one person, I like that person, I focus on that person. And I'm not able to focus on anything, anyone else other than that person. And that ends up hurting me because we're dating and I'm dating, even though I'm only dating you, but you're dating other people. Mm-hmm. Now I'm pissed. Because I expected them bitches gone by yesterday. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Um, What was the topic at hand? what (laughs) my computer froze girl (laughs) but what I was talking about was unlearning behaviors and I realized that in relationships there are a lot of behaviors that I saw growing up the dynamic between spouses that I have to that I recognize now at 36 I didn't recognize and realize them at 25 um, things that I would say, you know, arguments that I would have, you know, ways that I would behave. I didn't recognize them at thir- 25, but now at 36, I completely, absolutely am aware of them. And I make a conscious effort not to be what I saw that I felt like was detrimental to relationships. Um, but that's just growth. That's, you know, part of the thing, you know, like, okay, for example, I know someone. I try to be real broad about certain stuff. I know someone who has a job where um, they saw someone at their job get let go because they got randomly drug tested and they came up positive for marijuana, which is something that the company prohibits. Mm -hmm. That person then decided that they were going to give up marijuana because they didn't want their job to be forfeited. They didn't want to have to forfeit their job. 
I am a person who is willing to learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when I'm unlearning behaviors, I'm unlearning things that I saw growing up that I don't want to be present in my own relationships. Mm -hmm. I would imagine as we continue to grow and evolve as human beings, there will be things my children see in my relationship Mm -hmm. that they will be able to say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that way. That's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is a layered conversation because it can, it can range from, uh, lifestyle, eating habits, Mm -hmm. drinking, drugs, how the way you handle conflict, how you, you know, handle friendships. Like, um, I've, I, I've had to unlearn, you know, that, and that's not to say that I learned all of these bad behaviors, but me and my mom are just different people. We're just, we're Mm -hmm. just different and we do things differently. And, you know, my mom always was just like, my kids are going to be just like me and just like me. They're going to do things just like me. And how come, <laughs> how come you don't do things like this? Because I did it. And I just feel like, you know, like I get up and I make my bed every single morning. How come you don't get up and make your bed every single morning? Because I'm not fucking doing it. We're not doing it. <laughs> I don't even know nobody. I don't know no person that makes their bed. Like when I first, I've been living on my own since way before I should have been. 18, 19. And I got up every day and I made my bed. My bed was made when I went to work. Baby at 36, you know when my bed get made? About every other week or so when I change my sheets. <laughs> other than that, when I get out the bed, I throw the motherfucking covers to the top. Right. Keep it pushing. Okay. Right, because I because I'm because I'm probably gonna get back in it quite soon. <laughs> People work from um, home now. So it's not exactly. even a thing where we're leaving home at 7, exactly. 7.30 in the morning and getting back at, you know, 6, 6.30 in the evening. That's not even a thing no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, my mom is super duper regimented. And in her mind, she felt like, well, if I'm regimented, then my kids are going to be regimented. And I was like, you know, not everybody does things like you. In certain ways, though, it's certain cleaning habits that my mom had. That I have. That I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But girl, making my bed every day, like, like that ain't one of them. Like, <laughs> she wanted that. To, she, that was a fight. You know, she want to argue and, and fight about me not making my, I, it's my fuck, it's a bed. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't, I didn't come home at 3 a.m. smelling like booze and weed. You over here trying to fight and really argue about how I didn't make my bed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Girl. And then you wonder why I don't want to talk to you for three days because I, because you're mad about my bed. Like, like, Here's, here's something else that I have been peeping. There's a lot of kids, and I don't want to call them kids, but they still living at home with their parents. And they fucking they got, should. They got, they, they got a corporate job, and they stacking their bread. They not paying. They, they, they might be contri- paying an internet bill or something, paying Night one bill, bill in the house. Water bill, gas bill. Bread. Hmm. bread. When I was, when I lived at home with my mom after graduation, Joy, I was itching to get the fuck out of my parents' house. And you know why? Because my mom was always like, well, you two grown women can't be living in the house. And I think that that is a very warped frame of mind to have. Absolutely. Why, why, why can't two grown women in the, live in the house? I'm your daughter. And you what know, do you want? What, you, what do you, what, doesn't it make more sense for mom and daughter to live under the same roof versus your daughter leaving and going to get a roommate? Cause they two still grown women. And then you got living on her own mm-hmm. and paying all of these bills and not actually having a good start in life because I was able to live at home and stack my bread and have a good nest egg. Like there are so many black children who have to leave the house at 18 gotta go you've got to go you're 18 you're an adult you have to go when in all actuality i probably could have stayed home for a while mm-hmm. now my, you know, my, but... my, my fault was to is not to anybody else's fault but my own i was trying to be grown wanted to get a place with a nigga you know mm. and so i moved out sooner than i should have for that reason but my mom did have a philosophy now the philosophy turned out not to be true i believe i think As time went on, you know, my mom grew. And her philosophy was, once you gone, you gone. Mm -hmm. You leave, you move out, you can't come back here. Now, I didn't have to, you know, go back to my mom's house because I couldn't afford to live or work or pay bills. But before I moved to Cleveland, I moved out of my place. I'll never forget. It was Halloween 2013. 
Halloween 2013, I moved out of my apartment and I moved into my mom's house. And within 30 days, I was able to tell my mom, oh, I got another job and I'm finna move in a month. But mm-hmm. my mom's, you know, her idea and her rhetoric had changed from when you gone, you gone to, oh yeah, you can come back and save your money. And, you know, my mm-hmm. brothers now, I tell my brothers all the time, my brothers in their early 20s, stay here long as you can let that lady tell mm-hmm. you it's time to go before mm-hmm. y'all get up out of here but my brothers yeah. also have a lot more freedom than i did when Me i had, when i was gr- quote unquote grown you know my mom yep. don't ask my brothers where you going and who you going with how long you gonna be you're out coming back. you gotta be yep. back i didn't have that luxury so moving out for me was like i have to move out so that i can be able so to have move as an adult my brothers don't yeah. do that. My brothers don't do that. They they be having you know, people two over. grown women fucking in here. Two grown women fucking like my, I, I, my brothers will have a kickback at the house, and my mama be like, "Oh, I'm going to my room. I'm gonna be there for the rest of the night because you know my brothers is having company." I'm like, "Bitch, who else is it? Yours or theirs? What's going on?" Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I if if that wasn't like the frame of mind that our family has hasn't had for generations maybe i would have stayed in the house a lot longer but i i wanted to get out of the house to get up from being uh, living with my you know with my mom and just the way that she chose to like handle stuff like do you think that even outside of our own personal experience of unlearned behaviors that there's some unlearned behaviors within our community that we need to like there's some behaviors we need to unlearn within our community yeah um i you know that we need to be a, a we need a more of a community mindset everyone's out for self okay you know the the mental health and actually going to therapy and understanding what it is and what it is designed to do understanding uh mental health and how some of the things that may have gone on in your family were because of mental health issues mm. that that you chose to ignore and not address mm-hmm. like all of mm-hmm. that um i know it's a lot of even, black people who had somebody them you know they're a little crazy and we always just to some girl you know they're a little mm-hmm. crazy but no they really they struggling with a mental health issue mm-hmm. for real for real like mm-hmm. that ass um the you know re- relations between you know adult or uh adult men and you know female children mm. and the way you know you don't even need to be sitting on no grown man's you know th- those kinds of things and I understand Mm -hmm. the, you know, I understand the logic. You're a little girl. You don't need to be sitting in no grown man's lap, but also this is my uncle and I'm, I'm looking at a game on his phone and there's nothing sexual about what's happening right now. But why is there, why is there this undertone Mm. to that? I think that's a little bit weird. I'm still, I'm still that ties into, that ties into families who know that there was some weird shit going on that wanted to sweep it under the rug or not believe the the child that said hey such and such was touched you know what mm-hmm. I mean? it's, just, it's there's so many layers to learn learning behaviors and unlearning behaviors and i think there are a ton in the black community and i think that as we continue to grow and evolve and unlearn those behaviors we will we can get a lot farther mm-hmm. but i do think that the some of the old adages and some of the things that we just kind of believe into our core have held us back a little bit. The, um, the, the having a sense of community within your family being the biggest one and, you know, more or less pushing your kids out as soon as they graduate high school and making them fend for themselves instead of saying, Hey, stay home and stack your bread. Cause I don't know and, how and, anybody's doing that in this economy. How? How? I mean, there's an, there's an apprentice on my team. She's 25. I think she's got, you know, five siblings. The youngest is like four and she's 25 mm. and she still live at home with her family. And she should. Don't go but nowhere, girl. Money. Stay where you at. My, my guy friend, he's like my little bro out in Minneapolis. He's 27, almost 28. He's probably making close to six figures or just touching six figures. And he don't got no rent to pay. Mm. He's living in his parents, stacking his bread. Now, can he, you know, he can't have his girlfriend up in there. You know, he can't be knocking her down and shit when his parents are in the next room or whatever. But he also has freedom. You know, and he's knocking her down. Wait. You know, he can't. And at 27 in your own place, you can do that. You can't do that at your parents' house. 
but he, you know, I don't think his mom and or his father. Hey, have two grown men living <laughs> up in the same house. Two grown men fucking. You know, it, it's not. It, that's not even crossing anybody's mind. What's crossing right. their mind is, is my son making money? Is he saving money? And he's, is he going to have a nice nest? Is he going to be able to buy a house when, right. when he moves out? Right. Because that's what he's, that is what he is setting himself up for to take all of that fucking money that he has stacked and go put a down payment on a crib. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think the black community could benefit from letting the kids stay at home longer, especially if they got a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, work and save your money and get on and, and, and set yourself up. What can I do to help you set yourself up and put you in the best position? I'm going to let you live here and make all this money and not pay no bills. And if you have to pay a bill, one bill. I mean, just I don't think that's a bad idea. Um, having having a child pay a bill or maybe just a set a set amount of what it costs to live in my house, because that's going to prepare you for adulthood. Mm -hmm. Um. Some parents, I think, go to the extreme with that, which I'm not in agreement of. Like, cause some some parents start doing that when the child, as soon as the child get a job at 16 and they paying a the light bill, and I just feel like, all right, you, you, you. My grandma did that with my mom. I think that's she dragging it a little bit. I think my it's mom dragging. Said she wasn't going to do that to us. Yeah. That's an unlearned behavior. I'm not going to make my kids take their little checks and pay bills around the house because my job is as, as a parent, parent is to provide, to provide for my right. children. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think another. Um, this is a big one for me. I don't know if you you could say some of it is a learned behavior and an unlearned behavior in the same token is that. Um, and this was more so one parent than the other for me, but um, I think that it, there is a lot more black pride today. Then there was, how old am I? What, 20, 20 years, years ago? ago? Thank you, friend. 20 years ago, because there has, there, there used to be this, um, this, this misplaced conception that immersing your black child in a white world or white school or white extracurricular activities set them up for success. And I think we know that now that that is not the case. Not only does it whitewash them and rob them of understanding who they are, I think that it also um, perpetuates a stigma that um, being who you are isn't acceptable. Um, being of a different race is more elite. Um, I think there's a lot more Black pride in 2023 than there was in 2003. And I think that that is a great mm -hmm. thing, whether you call that a learned behavior or an unlearned behavior, um, it continues to evolve. I hope that it continues to evolve in the trajectory, the way that it's going now. Um, I think that that has a lot to do with some of the uh, struggles and a lot more to do with some of the struggles and a lot more to do with some of the um, setbacks we face as a people. Because we are beginning to be a little bit more um, prideful in who we are, the people that we are, the people that we look like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but uh, I'm definitely appreciative and I'm, I can't wait to instill that sort of pride in my own children. I want mm -hmm. me some black babies. Lord knows I do. I I ain't rushing or nothing, but I'm just saying. Have you ever had any of those moments where you're like, I'm so fucking glad I'm not a white person. <laughs> I'm so glad that I was born black, that I'm there a black go, woman. I am just so, like, I'm yes. just so thankful. Yes. I'm just thankful that, like, when the universe and... You know, and the, the, when, every, when everyone came together <laughs> and created me, it was a black me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very happy that I am me. I'm very happy. To, I, I wouldn't want to be. I love the fact that I have beautiful brown skin. Like, I love that my hair fucking be like, boom. Okay. I like that it stands up. I like that I can smooth that shit down. Like, I, I just, we're, it's just, we're just such a flavorful people, you know? I, I just couldn't imagine being a stringy haired maiden. There <laughs> you go, y'all. Uh -uh. I couldn't. Uh -uh. I'm about to end. I'm about to end. I'm about to end the podcast because Pasha know what that means to me. Pasha, it's an inside joke. Me and Pasha got about these fucking stringy haired <laughs> maidens, and I'm gonna get you free because you know what you're doing. I I'm just very. 
<laughs> I'm just glad that that's not me. It's a little bit, so. you know, sometimes it's it's a little bit disheartening and disappointing. Like when you talked about you went to D.C. and you went to the museum and you said they started from the beginning at slavery. What's unfortunate is that's our beginning. A lot of us mm-hmm. is our beginning, but that's really not who we are. That's actually not our beginning. No. Our beginning starts in Africa, but we just don't have the history and the knowledge and the wherewithal to know what that was like. Um, unfortunately, mm-hmm. a lot of most of our beginning starts with slavery. Such a detrimental yeah. point of point of life to be in. But look how far we've come. Look at these behaviors we have learning and unlearning right. and the growth that we've right. had and the generational knowledge. Okay. Cause wealth isn't just money. It's knowledge too. It's empowerment. Yeah. It's pride. A lot of the generational pride and empowerment and growth that we've had just from 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's a big thing. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like that, is the perfect mm. note to end on. Yes. Uh, shoot, I think we we clocking in what hour and forty minutes. I can't total? tell now, friend, but it's a good episode. I think so too. We we covered a, a, a wide, wide range of topics. variety of topics, mm-hmm. but I feel like we cut co- we covered some shit that's just close to the you know touch at the heart mm-hmm. Like it's not the norm. We touched on a little bit of stuff y'all want to hear, relations and stuff. But we touched on some, you know some of the stuff. I saw a post on social media, and the comments. I can't remember what the post was, but I just remember reading some of the comments, and the comments were saying, "I guess when people, I guess when black folks decided to do podcasts, the only things that they were going to talk about was sex." relationships and something else and again i take pride in the fact that the same difference podcast isn't that we touching Mm -hmm. and talking on stuff that actually matters and makes a difference and causes people to Mm -hmm. like think you know when they're Mm -hmm. raising their children and they're you know unlearning behaviors that their parents taught them or teaching their kids children that are teaching their children things that are healthy that they can pass to the next generation i think it's, it's it's such a great thing um, that we don't just talk about, like I said, who's popping that pussy? You know, who's going to be? Mm, we ain't doing all that. We ain't got time. Do you like it from the back? Uh, no. Do you like it? Mid- like, oh, oh, you didn't want me to answer that. that? Oh, never mind. Go ahead, friend. You are so stupid. I mean, that I just don't, I don't care to hear that about strangers. <laughs> I don't want to know what the fuck. I don't want. I don't know. I don't want to hear about how so and so said your back shot air smell like baccarat forty five. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear that. I don't I, care I, I about also that. Like you, I also prefer to have those those conversations with the person that I'm intimate with. Yeah, mm-hmm. and if I want to have a little girl chat with my homegirl, like that's that's that ain't gonna be that ain't gonna be on the bottom. I ain't about to right, tell you how. Right. Let's see. You I, know, I, I wrote the nigga to high I, heaven. I'm not gonna. I can have that conversation with a person that I'm intimate in, which at this point is no one. But I can have a conversation with my girlfriend at any point in time. Right. And which I don't. We know y'all like doing so. Right, but like just to be on the podcast, like yeah, and I like it when a nigga spit in my mouth and shit. I'm not. I don't want to hear about that shit. That's nasty. Okay, can we answer that question real quick? Do you want a nigga to spit in your mouth? No, I don't. That's disgusting. No, I don't. Nigga spitting up fucking everything he had on a hamburger. Onions, lettuce, tomato, cheese, hot sauce, barbecue sauce, mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard. Why won't you spit in my mouth? Don't. I don't understand. You know what? What is this? I don't understand. How did that become sexualized? Spitting in somebody's mouth? What? I you don't already know. gonna I swap know. the spit when you kiss, okay? And that's you're gonna, that's swap, enough for me. you're gonna swap the spit when you kiss. Why do you need the nigga to? S- I don't need no loogie, baby. I'm good. Right, and then y'all be smoking hookah, black and miles, Newport one hundreds, and everything else, and you want to pull all that from the back of the back of the back of your throat and put it in my okay. mouth? I think the okay, fuck that's, not. That's enough. I am good. <laughs> I am good. Count me out, baby girl. Same. Mm-mm. Same. Mm-mm. No, thank you. No, thank well, you. Well, friends, tell me what you're working on this week, what you're looking forward to, what's going on, what's on your agenda for the week? <sighs> well, I am, I was home all day today, and I have mm-hmm. some client events tomorrow, and then I'm on a plane on Wednesday to go to my hometown to spend a week with my family for Easter She's holiday. giving well traveled, is what it's really giving. I hope you're going to be house, baby girl. I'm ready to sit down, okay? Because I would like to go to the gym five days a week. I can't do that when I'm on a plane. 
you know, it's just it traveling. And, and also and- it becomes hard to eat healthy or eat the way you want to when you're doing that much moving around. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's easy to grab a little pack of crackers real quick and munch on those for breakfast when I actually probably should have had a cup of coffee and some avocado toast and fruit, you know, shit like that. It's just I, I, I did something really interesting today. And the message that I received was that I need to start that I need to change my mindset and start taking better care of myself. So I think that moving forward. What what about that on? It was just uh, what the cards were telling her. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I needed to take care of myself and really like pour into myself. And you need to treat yourself the way you want these men to treat you. Yeah. yeah. Say that, friend. Like, Tell them again. You need to treat yourself the way you want these men to treat you. And um, yeah, there was a few things that kept coming through there. There were a lot of different messages that I received today, but the number one, the number one was like, she told me, she was like, you need to, she was like, you're really humble. She was like, you don't pop your shit. You don't talk your shit. She was like, you don't, you don't boss up. She was like, you, you got a lot that you need to like put out there. And she, 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 one of the cards was a camera. And she was like, you need to put yourself out there more. And she was like, and you need to change your mindset and get out of this poverty mindset. Mm. Like I'm very, I'm very much like self-deprecating and like, oh yeah, we exchange numbers, but that nigga ain't going to call me. And it's like, or maybe you could be like, Ooh, I hope he calls me. And if he doesn't, not a big deal, but it doesn't, she said, you know, just be careful about what you're putting, what you're saying and just maybe focus on your mindset and be careful about you know, being stuck in this space. And so, yeah, it was, it was very inter- I had a reading today, basically. I don't know, friend. There's a couple of niggas I gave my number to. I actually wish them niggas never called me. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's you, it, there's a, a spectrum, right? You know, you, you, you give your, you give a number to somebody and you, you know, there's a little attraction and you hope something's going to happen. And, you know, there might be some conversation for 48 hours and then there's not anymore. So then what do you do? (laughs) You can't really get mad. Um, But also, you know, if it was already in my mind, you know, that you were assuming the worst, you can't really be mad when the worst happens. So, um, yeah, it was very insightful. Um, I'm always a little bit leery about stuff like that, but I was in a space of openness and I was looking to receive, I was in a place of, I wanted to receive. I was about to say, most of the time when that happens, it's because you're looking for something. You're looking for some understanding or some direction. Yep. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as the eating situation, you are going home to Omaha this week. Mm -hmm. Let's start that. Let's implement that when you get back to Chicago. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to be eating healthy just cause I'm in, just because I want to. Like Maybe when I'm I go really home, just, you know, like I'm, I'm not going to say like if my, mom, if my mom make me some fried chicken, macaroni and cheese and green beans, which is my favorite dinner. Like I can't say that I'm not going to eat it, but I'm also not going to be eating up all the bullshit mm-hmm. in my mm-hmm. house like I still yeah. am now I'm gonna eat because one, one thing that's been, always been being since I can remember a memory is Sunday dinner okay <laughs> Sunday dinner been a big thing for us since Sunday dinner was a Sunday dinner okay I'm from the south yeah. we Sunday dinner like ain't nobody ever Sunday dinner before okay mm-hmm. so be a lot of folks doing Sunday dinner because it's Easter coming up my yeah. family baby every Sunday well, is Easter we son, none dinner. of my family. We don't all live in the same place anymore. Yeah, so no but that's all right because like I ain't anymore. lived home in almost a decade now, and I still cook Sunday dinner. And I ain't got that chick child or nigga up in here to eat it with me. But I'm mm-hmm. gonna Sunday dinner like ain't nobody ever Sunday dinner before. But let me tell you, you funny. Mm-hmm. If anybody from Richmond, Virginia, listens to this podcast, y'all know, y'all know, I don't play by my wawa. Damn the diet when I go home. Wawa gonna be had, okay? I don't know what that is. You don't know what it is, baby, and I feel bad for you. If you don't live on it's the, a, it's a, if it's you a don't thing. live on the East Coast, come to our side of the country, oh. and gain an experience you ain't never had in your life. What is a restaurant? When we talk about business moves, I have looked into franchising a Wawa a few times, and they don't even allow it. That's how good the business is. You can't even franchise these motherfuckers, okay? It's a fast food place. 
It's a gas station, but it's a kitchen, and it's not the type of kitchen you would think about in a gas station. It is the elite of the elites. It is not Sonic. It is not QT. It is not Sheets. It is Wawa. Interesting. And I don't have a brand deal, but that's just what it is. Mm. Okay. I'll have to do my Googles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I got going on for the week. Easter is on Sunday. You know what? I should set a goal for myself to go to church. I'm not even going to do it. Because the worst times to go to church is Easter and Mother's Day. All the niggas be in there. Okay? I ain't even prayed to the master in a decade. Or at least in the last year. But they in church. Um, I do my own my own praise and worship in the house, though. I do that often. The house, the car. Right. We, can get, we can get it in. I don't have any plans this week. I think I'm going to be going to L.A. in the next week or two for some business stuff. Um, But that's all I got going on this week. Nothing planned. We'll see how the week unfolds, child. Y'all, I don't ever know if I'm coming or going. Be honest with you. I don't be knowing if I'm coming or going. I be thinking I I got things figured out and I'm on the right path and the right trajectory and this is going good and this is looking nice and this is this could be something and then the next thing I know it's time to record the podcast and I be like bitch let me tell you what happened yeah I mean I feel like I my my foot is on the gas and I'm just pushing the pedal to the metal and you know like I I literally got home yesterday afternoon and when I get done talking to you I'm gonna like unpack and repack repack because tomorrow I have work stuff and then I have to come home and make sure everything well I mean I don't really have shit I have to do here at home but like I'm about to leave you know I'm about to leave again so yeah so move I'm just in motion all motion 2023 but I need to motion my ass into the gym and motion it sounds like it's gonna be a busy um, busy second quarter I think it is. Okay. Yeah, my cousin is turning twenty one. She wants to go to Vegas for her birthday in May. Ooh, I like um, Vegas. I, Friend, invite me. I could be a cousin. Yeah, <laughs> he's so stupid. Wait, May what? Um, no, uh, May six. Oh, everybody got a May. All these damn Tauruses. Oh well, her birthday is the twenty third, but she's. Oh, okay. uh, but the, the weekend is going to be May six. Are you going? The, probably. Okay. Yeah. The beginning of June, uh, my homegirl from Minneapolis will be in town, so I'm kicking it with her. Um, but then my cousin is coming in June because he wants to go see a live taping of the Read mm. podcast. Um, it's their 10 year anniversary, so he's going to be here for that. Um, then my grandma's birthday is at the end of June. Not really sure what we're doing Ooh, there. Passion with her celebrations, y'all. Mm-hmm. Passion be acting like she be having a busy weekend. Weekend, Passion, you got a busy year planned, baby girl. I do July. I mean, because because you already in June, July, August, September. I mean, I got shit planned in November. Mm -hmm. My family is going on a cruise. Oh, I love a cruise, girl. It's gonna be like sixty of us. Okay, when y'all going? Um, we are going to Ocho Rios, Jamaica. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, (laughs) y'all going though? In November, okay. November 5th, that ain't a bad time. That ain't too bad of a time. It's a little kind of like after the end of hurricane season, so that shouldn't be too bad. I is it gonna be hot? Because I I'm I'm not doing no beach vacation if it's not gonna be hot. I need ninety degrees sun beaming. Like I need to be cooked nah. at the end of this trip. Nah. Well, anyway, July Beyonce. Um, you know, August I might do Lollapalooza, which is a big, huge music festival here. I might do that. I heard Dream. I heard uh, Dream Fest this past weekend was it. I, they saw Dreamville, it. whatever it's called. They say it was better than Coachella. I I believe it. I believe it. Mm-hmm. I believe mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um. Let's see. My birthday's in September, so I'm kind of I'm trying to decide what I want to do. So yeah, I mean, shit. Second quarter's already booked. We're already set. Okay. It's already set. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, as always, thank y'all for tuning into the Same Difference podcast. Please leave us a review when you stream the podcast, whether it's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, make sure you follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, like, comment. We would appreciate all of that. Um, Instagram, cute in the comments. Instagram is doing what Instagram does. Um, you know, doesn't matter how great of a clip we have or how much. How many comments or likes or shares we get, they keep it, you know, to a minimum. So our traction on Instagram has not been what it was a month ago, a month and a half ago. But we're going to keep giving y'all what we got because y'all love it. We love y'all for tuning in. 
So appreciate you all. Make sure if you can interact with us on Instagram. That's where most of our followers are. Um, but that's not the only place you can find us. So Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, we're all of those places. And we would love for you to be a part of our homegirls and our homeboys. Just keep it cute in the comments. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. All right, y'all. It's been a long episode. So we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>